Oh, welcome friends. Today we will study about research design. SDC is basically dedicated to marketing research. So obviously the research designs that we are studying or will be studying in this presentation are more concentrated uh, towards marketing research. So let us go and uh, get into a formal definition of research design. I try to understand uh, what research design is. So a research design is a framework or a blueprint for conducting a research project. It is a set of procedures which we shall follow in due course for obtaining the information uh, required and also to complete the entire research problem or solve this research problem. The research design is the foundation for conducting a, a research project and for completion of a research project in proper order. So it is from starting to the end of the research activities uh, under the project will be underlined in a research design. So that is how we look into a research design. A research design has the following steps. So let us look at the different steps of research design. First, we have to design, decide about the type of research. That is whether this research is an exploratory type of research or it is a descriptive type of research or it is a, it is a causal type of research. Now once uh, this uh, decision is taken. Next, we think about what are the information that is required for completion of the design and some uh, words related to uh, starting with W becomes very important in this particular concept like who, that is the who are the person or the subjects on whom the study is going to take place. What are the information that are required from this subject? When these information are to be collected? from where this information is to be collected and why this group of information is really necessary to be collected from the subject and ultimately the way in which the information is to be collected from them. Now, we then after measuring, taking the information required some or even in the process of taking the information, we might require to have some measurement or scaling process to which, uh, which, which we can reach up to that. So this measurement and scaling process would be well defined and if required implemented, uh, how it is to be implemented. That also is to be taken when we construct a research design. Construct a dummy questionnaire and improve on it to reach to the final one. Generally in most of the studies in which primary data are collected, we, this collection is drawn, drawn to a questionnaire. Now this questionnaire is a list of questions which uh, actually help us to collect information about the survey in particular. Now we start with a dummy questionnaire and then we try to improve on it to reach the final uh, question. So this uh, process uh, here we take the help of a process called a pilot survey which becomes quite useful in taking us from a dummy questionnaire to the final questionnaire. So this is generally done in this way. Specify the sampling process and the sample size and to collect the data and perform necessary analysis on the data so that the objectives of the survey can be reached or the facts that are hidden behind the figure are actually identified or found. Sampling procedure is, uh, though we will have a detailed discussion later on the sampling procedure. Uh, what we can uh, tell now is that the sampling procedure is actually the process in which uh, the observations are selected from the open. Basic idea about the entire concept is to make your sample as heterogeneous as you can so that it can be, be considered as a representative of the population. Population here means the aggregate uh, of subjects on which you want to perform the study. And sample size is the number of units that you are going to collect or the number of units of which you are going to collect, from whom you are going to collect the information. So all these uh, decisions are to be taken when actually you speak about the research design. So by this time you must have understood how important the research design is so far as uh, the entire research process is concerned. Any activity or most of the activities of the entire research process are embedded in research design. 
That means this is the planning stage and when you construct your research site. And then comes the uh, phase of implementation. So once uh, the planning is over, then only implementation starts. So research design seems to be one of the first and foremost steps that one needs to follow for completion of this research. Now, basically we can divide our entire research design into two groups. One is exploratory research design and another is a conclusive research design. So let us look into both of them uh, one by one. And exploratory research design. So let us look what is an exploratory research design. So in an exploratory research design, what we intend to do is that we have not much or we don't have a fair idea about uh, how to go with the research, uh, how to perform the research, so what all things we are going to do in this research, that is quite, we are quite at a task. And since we are not in a position to take a decision uh, because no earlier studies are showing us a direction. Probably we are the first and foremost group of individuals in that particular area of research. In such cases, the exploratory research gives us a very good starting point. Because before becoming serious with this research, we need to explore more about the research design. So this is the first step of exploratory research. The information required is not strictly defined and the research process is very flexible and unstructured because the basic purpose you see in case of an exploratory research is that you want to explore uh, that how you can go on with your research on this. So this is basically a less formal approach. You don't need to be very much structured rather you start the entire research program in an unstructured manner because that will give you a better insight into the data and then you can convert to a, a structured uh, design. So these are the advantages uh, you can say that exploratory research has some flexibility and not as stringent as the conclusive research. The sample selected may not be random. This is aimed at uh, collecting of maximum information. Suppose, uh, let us take a very simple example. Suppose a, a person wants to open a fishery. He wants to give a fishery so that he can do can do some business related to fishing. So in that case he first uh, what he does is that he meets some people who are already in the business and maybe some dealer to deal with fish or the selling of the fish and maybe some of the uh, experts who actually do some research on fishes. So the already existing businessman give him some idea. These are once again confirmed by from the, it may confirm it for the dealer or meet the dealer of fishes to get more insight into the matter and meet some researchers who also tells how fish really needs to be done and what are the scientific methods. So we might uh, meet some agricultural economists also in this regard who can give him an idea about how much investment is required and uh, what, uh, how much will be the, uh, how much from where he can get the loan or how much money will be required in the entire project, how quickly he can reach the uh, no loss, no gain position uh, where he gets back the money that is invested. He may also contact a banker that for this business how much loan he can get uh, and whether uh, what happens to the other people who have taken loan for the same business, whether they are able to get it back or whether and they are unable to pay back their loans. So these, all these things will give him an insight about how good his business can be or whether this is at all a viable project. Are there so many players in the market that the market is almost circulated? So many such information will come after exploratory research. So once he's done exploratory research, then he can think of doing a serious research on the matter to take a decision when there he is to go with this business on uh, generally, the results that are obtained are very tentative and only considered as input for further research. So, exploratory research helps you to go for further research. Uh, exploratory research gives you a bar size view. Methods, as methods are flexible, so obviously very accurate results are not expected from exploratory research. Such research are uh, subjected to further exploratory research or Research. So this is about exploratory research. 
So more uh, about uh, exploratory research, some other points let us see. The objective is to discover new ideas and to get insight into different uh, insight into that particular area of research. It is the starting point of the total research design. It is flexible, it is versatile. So this uh, and uh, is the characteristics of exploratory research. The methods of this research include consultation with the expert, pilot survey, literature review, and qualitative research. Literature review may come from reading of similar types of studies already done by people. So this is literature review. Uh, some of uh, and qualitative research means some uh, discussion for uh, informal discussion with some expert in this regard that will give you an overview of uh, the problem that is at hand. So these are all the uh, all you uh, have we have to offer regarding exploratory research. We now go to conclusive research design. Obviously, the, as you can see, the name, the name gives an indication that in case of conclusive research, at the end, we will reach to some decision. And uh, this will follow, as we have already discussed, after an exploratory study. That means exploratory study will give you a head idea. Uh, and then uh, with this, uh, now you can go and do a more serious research. It is a more formal and structured than an exploratory research to conclusive research. Okay. Uh, it is a de designed to test specific hypotheses and examine specific relationships. For example, you uh, are interested in studying maybe same problem of uh, establishing a uh, fishery business. Now, in that fishery business, uh, you want to explore that, uh, okay, well, uh, rainfall is a very important factor for the growth of fishes. So you want to study this because you have some idea about previous year's rainfall. So with that you have estimated what will be the rainfall and now next three years and whether that rainfall is good enough for the growth of your fishes in your pond that you are going to have. So here the uh, decision or understanding is very specific. What are the variables? What are the relationships? What are the hypotheses that we are going to test? Based on larger samples and collected data are generally subjected to proper quantitative analysis. So we perform some quantitative analysis which uh, we want to uh, give a larger sample uh, and we collect the data. Based on larger samples and collected data are generally subjected to proper quantitative analysis. So this is one uh, purpose of this research. Findings are considered conclusive and the result obtained can be used for further decision making. Findings in this case are conclusive, so they take us to a uh, final solution at the end of this uh, research, and uh, these results can be used for the purpose of decision making. At the means, at the end of the research, you reach some conclusion. That conclusion uh, for that particular study uh, seems to be um, stagnant. That particular conclusion, and so accordingly, you can now implement the findings of the study uh, in practical field in real life yeah, because these are going to and give you a direction. This conclusive research will give you a direction. Now let us look at the different types of conclusive research. So let us have a, have a look at this. So conclusive research, there are basically two types. One is causal research and another is descriptive research. In causal research, we are interested in finding out the relationship between variables. In descriptive research, once again, we have two types of division, that is cross-sectional design and longitudinal design. Descriptive research here, we may not be able to find, uh, uh, may not have strictly the relationship between variables, but descriptive research gives us more description about the data set using mostly some of the statistical methods. Whatever you have found, it may give you some insights, which might also be a relationship between variables, uh, but that is not the only criteria of a descriptive design. They are basically divided into two parts, cross-sectional design and longitudinal design. Longitudinal design means you perform the study uh, several times uh, during the study period. Maybe you study uh, this year, next year also you perform the study, next year also you perform the study. So this actually you collect collect huge data set uh, at different time periods. So now uh, over the time period, what changes uh, the data is showing that might be one of the 
your interest uh, your interest in the study in cross sectional design we actually take a cross section of people maybe a group of individuals and find uh, uh, find information about them at that particular point at a given point say you have a local locality where there are at uh, 200 families uh, 200 households so you perform a study on the consumption pattern of those 200 families this is uh, a good example of a cross sectional but if you re uh, repeat the study say after a period of 6 months 3 or 4 times then that becomes a longitudinal study that means uh, you are studying or say you are studying one particular family one particular family uh, four five years at a gap of two months each their consumption pattern so that becomes a longitudinal study and how these family uh, are changed now when you have a mixture of both that is a cross section of people studied for several time periods then it is a panel design panel uh, research design so that is not uh, so much used in marketing research so marketing research we want to do the research and reach to conclusion quickly because this marketing field is very volatile things keep on changing so we can can't afford to do a panel uh, research design once again cross sectional design can be of uh, single or multiple multiple cross sectional design means we may take two different group of people and study among themselves and make a comparison between them for example we may in a given large country with lot of diversity so you may perform a study in the southern part of india and as i met in a few may also perform a study in the northern part of india and see the how the consumption pattern varies so that will come under come under a multiple cross sectional design single cross sectional design so <coughs> you suppose you go to maharashtra and then in maharashtra you perform a study on the consumption pattern of uh, the people of uh, maharashtra or a particular district of maharashtra that is an example of a single cross sectional design multiple cross sectional design a particular type of multiple cross sectional design is called as cohort analysis in cohort analysis we start with a group of people and see how the group of people actually uh, behaves for a particular time period or how they may uh, uh, how long for example suppose i start with a group of people who are investing money in share market and this group of people i continuously study for some period and how, see how they uh, their pattern or their investment pattern or their way in which they react to different share market situation uh, actually behave so these are examples of cohort analysis we will see this uh in details one by one uh in uh, subsequently so let us first start with causal research because that is one part and then we will go to the tip research so causal research. this is used to obtain the evidence of cause and effect relationship so it is quite clear that we want to find a cause and effect relationship then we are uh, want to find out whether a thing is really the cause of an effect for example suppose yield and rainfall so yield is dependent yield is the effect cause is rainfall which is the independent variable now i want to find out that whether there is an impact on cause uh, impact on yield and rainfall now it depend on the crop depend on the crop some crop rainfall might most crops have some influence on because of the rain uh, so what happens uh, you are to find out that what is the impact what is the impact whether rain has a positive impact that if it rains more food grains will increase production or it has a negative impact that if it rains more then the production of food grains will come down or it has a another some other type of uh, relationship for example actually the interesting uh, relationship between yield and rainfall is that in, initially when rainfall increases the yield will also increase say think of paddy plant as rainfall increases yield of paddy increases but at some point of time uh, the water will flood because of more rain and in that case the paddy cultivation will suffer and the yield will come down that means initially it showed an increase yield showed an increase with rainfall but ultimately as rainfall kept on increasing the yield was once again dropping down that means this is not a straight forward relationship come a uh, straight forward relationship there is which is cannot be explained through a straight line type of relationship but some curve might come into act so this is uh, how causal research uh, research are designed to determine the nature of relationship between the causal variables and the effect 
these effects can also be predicted. Once we establish a relationship between the cause and the effect variables, two variables are there or more than two variables might be there, then we can use this relationship uh, in causal research for the purpose of prediction or for the purpose of forecasting. The causal research, the independent variables are allowed to change in a controlled environment. Uh, now, for the controlled environment in some of the social science research, including market uh, research, might not be attained, might not be attained. So, causal uh, research design is an important uh, way to actually uh, look into the thing. So, in causal research, the independent variables are allowed to change in a controlled environment. So, this is one very important aspect of causal uh, research. Okay. Now let us look at the highlights of causal uh, research that objective of uh, this particular research is to establish a relationship between a cause and effect. So it establishes a cause and effect relationship. It uh, is how the independent variables uh, can uh, control other mediating variables. And so what happens here we study a, a particular independent variable how it influences a given dependent variable or a group of independent variables how they are influencing a particular dependent variable. However, there will be many variables in between the two which we call as mediating variables. Now these variables should be under control. That means these variables might not be allowed to change much so much so that it can influence the dependent variable. Now, this is a difficult proposition definitely. So, this characteristic is very important. And method of uh, attaining this type of relationship is through experiments because we require uh, live data. We require data from actual field to establish this type of relationship. So, these are the highlights of causal research. So, today uh, let us stop here and uh, in the next video we will be covering the other aspects of descriptive uh, research. So thanks for watching this video.